Good morning, everybody. It's John Gresson, ceramics and sculpture instructor at Spruel. Welcome to Coffee Break with Spruel. Um, this morning, I'm going to be throwing a mug, and this is not going to be a how-to, one, two, three, kind of from the basics um, project, but uh, I'm just going to throw a coffee mug that I think would, that I would like to make. So this is going to be more about uh, my personal design than about, again, about elementary construction. I will, however, talk through my process, so um, let's, uh, let's do this. <clears throat> All right, I've got about two pounds of clay here. Um, I started playing around with about a pound and a half. Normally, a pound and a half is a, is a appropriate mug size, but I want to go a little bit bigger. As I've been kind of uh, playing around and experimenting this morning, I've uh, realized that I want to go a little bit bigger. I want to be a little bit more dramatic. So we're going to stick two pounds of clay down on the wheel head. I'm going to pat this down so it sticks really well. I'll now seal this to the wheel head, making sure that no water gets underneath. And as I apply water, I'll make sure that I squeeze that behind my hand. I don't want the bulk of the water to go out into the splash pan. I want it to stick to the, really I want to generate slurry, liquid clay so that I have no friction. This next process, I'm gonna do what's called coning. A variety of different ways to center clay, and this coning process is the one that I think is kind of best practice, so uh, it's what I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna start with, what I always start with. My right hand will be here, it will be a support hand, it will, uh, it will keep the clay from going anywhere but up. It will be a resistance as I deliver force in this direction towards center, the clay will rise. And then I'll slide up and float off the top. And we'll continue this process until the clay is centered. Now this will be a large coffee mug and two pounds, even with fairly thick walls, it should come at a fairly substantial size. Again, this process of coning is not the only process of centering, but it's one that I really like. It's one that I was taught and resonates with me. I see a lot of potters using it. I'll finish up with a move that we call power centering, which some people, including some of our instructors at school, use that um, primarily. It's legitimate as well, um, and it's basically just trapping the clay between a top hand and a, and a bottom hand, a drive hand. That rattle you hear is just my bat, which is a plastic thing that's on the wheel. It allows you to take the work off very easily. It's the bat just rattling around a little bit as I bring this clay up and take it back down. Now this. <laughs> this next move, this is that power centering move. I'm going to drive the clay down with my hand. I'm using this part of my hand from this bone backwards here, this pad. And I'm putting that bone right in the center and I'm pushing the clay down. And with this left hand, I'm just offering support as it comes down. I'm driving into that. And then I want to make sure that I don't press too hard with both these. And I can't, I can't push both of these hands together at the same time. If I do, the clay goes this way. And, and uh, this is not a a strength process. This is a finesse process. So this, where I'm pushing the clay to center with my left hand and balancing pressure, my, my right hand will ride up and down on the clay. As I put pressure this way, my left hand will ride back and forth until I can balance that pressure and get all of the, the wobble and wiggle out. And then I just float away. And so now I've got a piece of clay that's centered and I'll begin to open it. And I'm gonna use, and it feels like my top is off just a little bit. So I'm gonna compress that. Now I'm gonna open it and I'm doing that with my thumbs. I'm starting with my thumbs just to push down here. Some people will open with their thumbs all the way down and occasionally I'll do that too. I kind of switch back and forth, whatever you're comfortable with. I'll drive with both thumbs and then usually what I'll do is switch. I'll use my left hand here, my thumb as a support. I'm just going to take these two fingers and I'm going to push downward with my middle finger. This one's offering support. 
Now, if that starts to dry out, I will, uh, I'll come back and get some moisture because I want to make sure that there's no friction. Friction's your enemy here. If you wind up with a lot of friction between your hand and the clay, you're going to wind up with twists and things becoming uncentered. Centering is the, is the hardest part of the process and probably the most challenging for beginning students. Most students struggle their first quarter just to, just to learn to center and don't make a lot or they make a lot of pots that are off center. And that's okay, that's part of the process. This is called a needle tool and I'm gonna drive that through um, to the bottom there. I'm gonna reach down with my finger and grip it and that'll, that tells me how thick the bottom is. So that's appropriate for this form. And um, so now I'll, I'll take my needle tool and put it off to the side. And now it's going to be uh, opening the form. So now I'm going to use this finger again in my middle finger. <clears throat> and again, this finger is there for support and my thumb is there for support. And I'm just going to pull parallel to the wheel head like this. And I want to keep my, my, my fingers parallel. That's a really important because as I pull back, I don't want to scoop up and have a rounded bottom. I want to have a flat bottom. This is a mug. It's a cylinder. This is the most basic form for ceramics. This is what everything is based on, or for pottery on the wheel. This is what everything is based off of, is the, the cylindrical form. So I'm just pulling back. Again, fingers are parallel to the wheel head, and the clay's opening. My wheel's at full speed. Now I'm gonna take this finger and these fingers, and I'm going to, these are offering support. I'm just gonna push down the center and move back and forth. Clay has what's called plasticity, this ability to hold form, and it has plasticity because its structure, it's a platelet structure, so if you think about like mica or fool's gold and what it looks like, sheets, clay looks like that under a scanning electron microscope if you could look at it real closely. And um, so you, as I'm Working with the platelets on the on the on the floor here, I'm taking them from an orientation like this, where they're scattered in a variety of different orientations, and I'm laying them down one on top of the other, pushing down and compressing them, and that's making them very strong. And that's an important thing. There's a lot of tension on the floor as a form like this, a ceramic form, dries. There's a uh, there's an awful lot of tension down there because the the walls are shrinking. Everything the, as the clay's drying, everything's shrinking. So it's losing moisture. That moisture that's between the clay plate which is is uh, it's leaving the form, and uh, and as it's doing that, everything's shrinking and moving in. And if, as that happens, there's a lot of tension on the floor. So if we don't offer this compression, then sometimes that can lead to what's called an S crack on the floor, and that happens to every potter. That's a common occurrence. I'm going to check the floor again. Just looking at it now, it looks a little bit thick. I'm just going to check it. And yeah, it's still good. So I'll go back in. And you might be thinking, well, you just poked a hole in the floor. Well, I did, and that's okay because I just got rid of it. I'm just compressing here, and that's all gone. We don't have to worry about that anymore. All right, so the next move that I'm going to make, this is a, I don't know where I picked this up, somewhere along the way. And uh, there are a variety of different ways to do this. Some potters will come on the front side and squeeze with their, with their hand like this and squeeze and the walls will come up. And for me, this works much better. What I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to take my hand like this and my index finger is going to lay on top of this finger and I'm going to compress. If you look at the gap between my fingers, it's very uniform. And so I'm going to squeeze the clay like this and as I do, the walls are going to come up and it's going to be a very uniform wall and that will take it will distribute the clay very evenly. So what I'm gonna have is a wall thickness at the bottom that is very similar to the wall thickness at the top. Let's slide my hands up. And now I've got this kind of, uh, like in this cone, kind of cone shape with the top cut off, trapezoid, I guess, something like that. And um, that's a good thing. The bottom is about the same thickness down here as the top. And as I go to pull my walls, I go to gather clay and bring it up, that's going to make it a lot easier for me to keep this very consistent. So, uh, which is a very important thing. Consistent wall thickness is very important. If you have a lot of clay down at the bottom, you have to work really hard to get that clay up. 
All right, so now I'm gonna start, looks like I'm a little bit off here, but that's okay. I'm gonna slow everything down. I'm gonna start pulling the walls. I'm pushing from the inside. I'm bringing my wall up. I'm gonna gather a little bit of clay from the bottom down here. And bring that up here at the top. I float away, just leave a little bit extra at the rim. And we'll get rid of, see this little ramp here at the bottom? I'm going to try to get rid of that and push that in. Make sure that I've got enough moisture again. And that's my last pull. That's a pretty, pretty good sized mug. But we're going to, we're going to belly the walls out. So we will, um, we have enough mass here to make a larger size mug. So this will shrink as we push the walls out, the bottom will drop. Now, if you see the top is off a little bit and somewhere along the way, either I did a poor job of centering or one of my poles was off or something. So I'm just gonna trim that rim off like that and take a little bit of clay away. That clay, I usually stick on the side of the bucket there and I'll trim my rim. And now we're back for good. That can happen either, again, if you didn't center correctly in the beginning, which I think I did, and it can happen in a pull if your hands are unsteady. So as you're as you're doing a pull, you move a little bit, or uh, it can happen. Um, well, what's our third one? I don't, I don't know. Anyway, if you make some mistakes along the way, you can wind up being off a little bit. So now I've got a pretty good cylindrical form. I'm going to take my rib, my wooden rib, and that's this tool here. And I'm going to take a little bit of clay away from the bottom. It looks like maybe I wasn't completely centered at the bottom. This is what happens when you take a month off. Don't put your hands in the materials. And I'm going to slide my finger up. And you can see the form will come much smoother. And again, I'm compressing these clay platelets as I slide my finger up. <clears throat> and now that form is much stronger. I pushed some of the water from in between the platelets out, made it more compact. And now I've got to decide what I want to do with this form. So I've got some mass at the bottom down here, which is a good thing. Um, I, that means that I've got some, some material for a foot. I am going to trim a little bit of it away, and I like to use my potter's knife for that. So I'm going to come in and brace up and just take a little bit of that clay away that I don't need. This will save me some headache later on when I'm trimming. And I won't have to trim nearly as much material. I just undercut that with my needle tool. Take that band of clay away. It will also allow me to get underneath the form a little bit. So I'm going to get this moving and I'm going to take my, my tool and put it underneath and I'm going to offer some compression from the inside. You can probably see the form changing a little bit. And now I'm going to come back and, and offer some compression right there. This uh, hard edge right here that's a really great place to lose a ceramic form. We form what's called a break point right here. And um, if that gets thin, that's a great place for the, for the walls to fall. Okay, so I've got kind of an elevated form here. I like it. I think that what I'm gonna do is put some texture in the surface of this. And I'm gonna go to uh, another rib that I have, another wooden rib. This is uh, the very first wooden rib that I ever had. And uh, I got this in a pottery kit years and years ago when I was when I first started at Georgia State. And so I'm going to put some uh, some texture on the surface here, and I'm going to do this just by using the corner of the rib. I'm going to move really slowly, I'm just moving up. I'm just putting some spiral in this form, and you can see I'm supporting it from the other side. And this is simple. It's a nice, simple, clean little spiral. I think that looks pretty good. Originally. Uh, I was thinking about going the other direction, but I kind of like the way this looks now. So I think I'm just going to leave that. 
right now. And we'll come back and maybe we'll play with the surface a little bit more later. So now, um, I'm gonna go for my, my sponge and make sure there's no moisture on the floor. Clean up the inner walls. And I have a little piece of, what's called a sh you know, chamois. This is a synthetic chamois. And you can buy a chamois at the auto parts store. It's sheepskin. This is a fake one, a synthetic one. I'm just gonna use this to roll the top rim. Get that nice and smooth. And that should be pleasing to put your lip on. You know, you may see some undulation in this form, and I certainly see as I'm going along. It's not, it's, it's imperfect, and I think that's, uh, that's kind of what we're after in ceramics, is that you want to get good enough to where you can do whatever you want to do, but you also want to make sure that you're creating work that is not, well, doesn't look like it came from Target. No offense to Target. All right, again, we're gonna clear out that water from the inside of the form. No water pooling on the floor. And I think that it's a little tall. What do you guys think? Might be tall for a coffee mug. Let's reach to the inside. I'm gonna use my sponge for this. And we're gonna belly out. And that means I'm just gonna push from the inside. Outward. Expanding the form. Like I said before, it's gonna it's gonna get lower. Because we're stretching the walls. It's a little bit more pleasing to me. A little bit of a strange area right here. Well, that's fun. It's going to be a big one, but uh, we're going to lose about 10, 10 to 15 percent of the firing. So it'll, it'll be a big one, but it'll get back down to reasonable size. I'm going to true this rim a little bit. Just offer some compression there. Get a little bit of flare. See, I'm turning the tool and flaring that outward. And then one more time with the chamois. That's looking pretty good. Hey everybody, John Gressens again. Welcome back to Coffee Break with Spruill. Um, I'm here to craft the handle now for the mug form that I created earlier. And I've got a kind of a billet of clay here. And you'll often see uh, instructors and students too, I mean, it's the way I generally teach it, working off of a big knob of clay. A uh, big round ball and it's coming to a point we're pulling handles that way but I, I want a wider handle for this so I started out with um, with a wider form so there's no reason why you can't take something like this and you kind of pinch it I'm gonna pinch it wider this is basic hand building technique we learn so there's a little crossover here from the wheel to hand building or hand building to wheel um, and I'm just gonna get that uh, kind of a uniform thickness and then I'm gonna start pulling from here. So I've got this slab of clay, and now I'm gonna wet my hand and in the bucket. And this is just the bucket that I used before. It's the same one that I make all my, you know, the, that I'll use while I'm working. And I'm gonna start pulling this handle out. And notice I'm squeezing between my finger and thumb, moving back and forth, using my entire hand. And I'm trying to make sure that this tapers evenly. See, there's a knob at the end there, I'm gonna pinch that knob off because as I pull this, I'll continue to hit that knob and stretch it out really thin right here down at the bottom. So I'm just going to 
continue to pull this. And the reason I did it this way is because I want a wide handle for this form. I think it's appropriate for the form. And so that's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna take my thumb and run that down the middle just so I can get some ridges on the side. And when this rolls over, you'll see, you'll get these really nice kind of high points on the edges here. This is very typical of a pulled handle. It's a really simple process, but it's simple, but it takes a lot of practice. It's one of those that, you know, we teach it to students and it's a pretty elegant looking handle so far. There's an awful lot of it. I won't need this much, but I'm gonna take my needle tool now and cut off the extra. I just cut that off and now I'm going to take what's left of this and I'm just going to pan down here and I'm going to move my bucket out of the way and I'll just set this. This is a piece of um, hardy board and hardy, it's hardy siding so if you look on this side it looks like the you know, side of a house is concrete siding. And on this side it's a nice smooth surface and it's, uh, it'll help us dry out pretty rapidly and now I'm just going to take that handle and I'm going to shape it or form it into what I want at the end and I think that I want something that is more round so I'm going to go ahead and just shape that that way or form that that way and then we'll let that set up and dry that way and that will uh, that will give us a really elegant handle a nice wide handle for that nice wide form that we created so uh, we'll come back in a little while once this dries and once our form dries we'll trim the form and we'll attach the handle so we'll see you in a few thanks everybody welcome back um, we're, I decided that we're going to put some texture on the surface of this uh, mug and right now it's in a, in a state it's it's uh, not quite ready to trim but it's really close so I decided you know I've got these stamps and I thought it might be an interesting contrast to have these this uh, linear surface and then if we broke it up with some stamps so I'm gonna go ahead and start here and this is a stamp that I created um, I just made it with a uh, it's made out of uh, out of clay and uh, I just stamped into the clay and then uh, made a coil of clay and stamped into it. So we're going to work from this area up this way. We're going to leave this bottom part because we're going to trim that. So I'm just going to kind of come in and start pressing in. And I press from the inside as well. I think this will be some nice contrast. I'm not going to try to create any kind of regularity here. I'm just going to move around, try to create some visual movement on the surface. And again, break up what's happening. And again, this is like that idea that we're putting a little bit of chaos into the form. This is not something you're going to buy at the store. It's not something you're going to see at your local Target store. Or again, no, uh, no shot at Target, but that's always kind of my easy go-to. Target actually does a pretty good job with design, but everything's so perfect. And again, I think imperfection is uh, really part of what we seek when we get into handmade. All right, so I've really manipulated that surface and really stamped into it and pushed into it. And we've got some imperfections and. And, and again, I'm happy with that. So now this is going to be something that's, uh, that's completely unique. There will be no two like this. So now what we have to wait for is uh, for this to finish setting up so that we can trim the bottom and then add the handle. So we'll see you in a few. Okay, hey, we're uh, going to trim this pot now, uh, this mug, and we're going to add a handle. So uh, I've already taken the liberty of centering this. And I've got three chunks of clay and I just took some of my regular clay that I would normally use and I made sure that I dried it out a little bit. And the, kind of the trick to, to doing this is to make sure that um, when you have this in a coil form, as you fold it over your finger, it cracks. You want it slightly dry because you want it to have some stiffness so that when we're trimming on the wheel, it doesn't come off. So I'm just gonna peel off three little pieces of this uh, slightly dried out clay. I'll set the rest aside. And now I'm going to use that to key this down to the wheel head. So I've got a clean wheel head. I'm just going to push down to the wheel head, not into the form. If I push into the form, then I'm going to wind up deforming the, the rim or the lip of the mug. 
And so all three of those are pushed down now and they've expanded to grab it. And now we're in a, shape, a position where we can trim this. So I've got two trim tools. I've got a round nose trim tool and I've got a uh, square trim tool. And I'm gonna try to make kind of quick work of this. So first thing I would do is I'm gonna flatten the top so I'll get that moving full speed. And if I had any irregularities here, I, would, I might do some more aggressive flattening, but I'm gonna start at the center, push down, and I'm just gonna move to the side clean that up and now that's flat it doesn't look flat because it's got spirals in there I don't know if you can see that hopefully you can but um, it is we just trimmed across and because I cut sideways it is flat and now this this is slightly irregular I'm going to cut I'm going to use my square tool to cut downward from the edge and now we're round so we're flat and round and now I can work on cleaning this foot up so uh, yeah, glasses. Didn't have glasses last time. Uh, I gotta get them off for this kind of work, this close up work. So now I'm just gonna work on kind of cleaning this up. And I think I like this square foot that I've got going on here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with it. I'm just gonna square this off. This clay's in a really great state to trim. It's in that kind of really perfect leather hard stage. We get it much harder than this um, it, it can be very pleasurable let's say to, to trim and to trim in a variety of different states but this state is particularly easy it's, some people like to trim at a really really hard hard leather hard stage this is very nice to trim the softer leather hard stage Just clean off that edge and now we'll hollow the bottom a little bit because it is flat Clean that up. Take some out of the bottom. Create a recessed foot. This is to just remove some mass from the bottom of the form, and it gives it a very finished appearance, uh, a trim foot. You know, there's two different kind of ways to approach uh, making pottery on the wheel and finishing pottery on the wheel, really. Um, and one is to do what's called a studio foot, and the studio foot is where you throw and it's finished. You cut it off the wheel and you finish it. You might do some, some manual finishing with your thumb or finger after it's uh, after it's finished. And that's a studio approach and that's that's legitimate, but um, it's more of a production potter's approach. And this is a very refined approach. You get a very finished appearance. It takes a lot longer, but, um, but I find it's worth it. And then I'm just gonna smooth out this, this bottom take all the hard edges off. Happy with the way this looks. I didn't have a tremendous amount of material to remove. Okay, let's stop and take a look at that. I really like the way that's looking. I think what I'm gonna do is come in and cut a little bit from the side though, just a little bit to refine this edge right here. Just to give it a very finished appearance. The trimming is not just for the foot, but also for the form if you need it. And that's a really nice look. I think I'm pretty happy with that. So let's unkey this and flip that back over. And you can see this has got a very finished appearance. There's a signature and a stamp that we'll need to have in here on the side, but uh, I'll do that on my time. Right now we're gonna focus on the handle. And we've got two handles over here. I pulled a couple. So I think the one that we pulled on tape is the best looking one. And now we're just going to take this and kind of see where this looks best. Like right now, it's a little big. I feel like it's a little big. 
So I'm going to change the form just a little, and I'm going to cut some off. And I'm going to cut some off just by cutting across like this. So I'll take, uh, I can use a variety of different tools. I could use a wire tool. I could use a needle tool. I'm going to go to my bag over here. <clears throat> and I forgot to get this one out. I should have had it ready. But I'm going uh, to have a tool. Sorry for the delay. My favorite tool. Ah! Of course it's all the way in the bottom. And this is a Chinese potter's knife. I love this. I got this uh, years ago at a store that's no longer in business. Um, but I'm going to use that to cut across. And that took some of the mass out. And I'll shape this a little bit. Right now it's a cut at a little bit of an angle. So I'm going to come back and just take that off. And that off. And I really like the way that looks. <clears throat> a small handle on a larger pot like this could be very interesting. And look what we've got going on here. I feel pretty good about it. I'm going to play with that and see if, or do I like it up higher? Do I like it lower? Do I like it in the middle? I think I like it kind of lower like this. I think that's a good look. So now I'm going to take that and my pot is firm enough to where I can lay it on its side like this. If I needed to, I could put some foam underneath or a towel or something like that, but it's it's pretty stiff. So now I'm going to lay it on its side. I'm going to take my... my my uh, potter's knife. I could use the needle tool. Maybe we should maybe we should switch to that because that's a little bit more common for most folks. And I'm gonna just trim or scribe around where the attachment point is on top and bottom. And this uh, this next step. This is the this is the piece that um, that quite a few people struggle with. You can see there's an outline here and an outline here. And I'm just going to really rough this up. This is um, this scoring part is a is a component that seems like it, it really it scares a lot of people, or an action that scares a lot of people, or they think that um, just by scratching it lightly is is enough. But if you think about it, um, if we were going to attach two things together, you're going to use my hands as an example. And we we oh sorry got an itch on the ankle. If we're going to attach two things together like this, we put some glue in between, we put them together, they can kind of move around. But <clears throat> in the glue, we're going to use uh, liquid clay or slip. But if we take two things and we score them very, very deeply, like our fingers here, and we push them together like this, they're really going to lock together. So I'm going to score the handle very aggressively, and I'm going to score the body of this mug very aggressively. And I think that there's an expectation often from young potters or inexperienced potters that um, we should have perfection in the beginning. But perfection is something, or you know, we've talked earlier about having imperfection, but having this very refined look um, happens all the time. And it doesn't. In the beginning, things are loose and fluid. And um, we refine them as the clay changes state. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach into my bucket with a paintbrush. I'm going to use a, just a watercolor brush. It's not one of my favorite tools. And if I had some slip or slurry, I might use that. But I don't have a lot of that right now. So I'm just going to paint on here and use the, the paintbrush to create slip or slurry. Sometimes I'll wet this and then score it again. But in this case, I've scored very deeply and everything looks good. And it looks like I'm generating good slip. So now we're going to attach these two, make sure that they line up well. And again, I mentioned earlier, let's kind of just push that together, about really making sure that you lock those together. So we're going to push really hard, and when we push, we're going to give it a twist. And this, again, I think is where sometimes people go wrong, is they're afraid to really kind of work the clay. And I'm going to push, and see how I'm bracing the clay, with both fingers here and I'm twisting. I'm gonna do here the, the same thing at the bottom. Push and twist. And we've got a really good bond now. And it's messy around these edges and that's okay because I'm gonna take my brush that is slightly damp 
and I'm just going to work it around the edges. And clean that up, pushing clay into the, the any crease or crack, any uh, uh, area between the handle and the and the pot. Also notice how I'm putting my hand on the inside of the pot and I have one on the outside and the action of pushing these together is supported on inside and outside. And we'll clean that up. So there's a little bit of, um, of cleanup associated with this, this mug. So I'll do a little refining, but um, that is my basic process of kind of start to finish for creating a coffee mug. And this one is something that uh, that uh, I just kind of winged and kind of made happen as we moved along. And I'm pretty pleased with it. We do a lot of uh, instructors, we do a lot of demo pots like this and kind of let our imagination run wild as we make them. Um, and so there are a lot of one-offs. So this is a truly unique one-off kind of pot and then our type uh, mug. And then, like I said, I will sign this on the bottom and give it a stamp on the side with what's called my chop. And that's kind of uh, like another signature. It's a mark of the potter. And, uh, and we'll be complete. So, hey, thanks. I really appreciate you guys for watching this. And hopefully you gain something from it. And, or maybe you, uh, you, know, you, you um, satisfied some interest that you may have in ceramics. And just remember, uh, when everything blows over, we'll still be around for you at Sproul. So, thank you very much. Bye-bye.